Okay, so you said you were on parole at the time. So what's going on now? Like, what's your situation legally? Are you done? I'm totally, my debt to society has been paid in full. Um, I've been pro off parole since December 26th of 2000, uh, what is this, 2020? The end of 2018 is when I finished. Okay, so you were there for what? eight years, is that right? I did, I got sentenced to 10. I was supposed to do eight and a half, which is 85%. That's what you get because it was a violent crime. If it's nonviolent, then you get 65%. So that's what it was, 85%. But then when I went upstate, I hadn't even gotten my GED yet. And, you know, I said, this is a perfect, like I recognize signs and I try to be as smart as possible. And I said, you know what? This is God telling me that I need to chill out. And he put me here rather than me overdosing or something else. He saved me. This is a good thing. I never looked at it as a bad thing. I always looked at it as a good thing. I used to say to God, thank you. You saved me. Because as I was there, my mother would tell me, oh, by the way, your friend Jimmy died. Oh, by the way, this one died. You know, a lot of, you know, that's what happens. Especially as you get older, your body's not like it was in its 20s. So this is what happens. And while I was up there, I went, I got my GED. And I said, you know what, GED, what are you going to do with a GED? So I went and I enrolled in school, not through the facility, outside, because they don't offer that anymore. They did away with that years ago. So I, met, I, I took, a, I got my associate's degree in a real school. It's a real, it's not a certificate. It's a real degree from a school called Ashworth College in Norcross, Georgia. And what those kids were learning, I was learning. I took business management. So I would get the textbooks. It was all Scantron and I would mail everything in and then the results would go to my house. And then I would speak to my mom and we would go over which ones I got right and wrong. And then I'd make a note and go back and look and see why I went wrong. And then that's, and when you do that, when you go correct yourself like that, you'll never ever forget that in the rest of your life. That's very Because you corrected it, you will never, a hundred years from now, if somebody asks you something related to that, you will have the answer because of that correction. Well, that's the, the whole thing, the whole idea of you really learn more from your failures than you do from your successes, but only if you really pay attention to them, right? So if but, you're going right. back and doing that, then you're really hyper-focused. And I do pay attention because I'm so about that. I'm so about God giving us little signs and just everything that happens at every second. And the reason why I feel that way and I know is because twice in my life, something happened where my life changed dramatically and profoundly like that when they found me on the beach for the Bronx Tale and I got the part bang my whole life changed here I'm some kid from Yonkers New York middle class family hanging out with my friends I'm on the beach July 5th 1992 I'm 15 gonna be 16 and then it's like my brother calls me out of the water because he told because there was a scout handing out flyers so he said my brother said no 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 hold on I'll get my brother he's perfect he looks just like De Niro so the guy was like, wow, he does. Oh my God. And I started doing my little impersonations. And, 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 and I knew, I knew that I was going to get that part that day. On the ride home, I knew there's no one in this world. And I'm not trying to sound arrogant or nothing like I just felt, I just felt the vibe. I just felt God. We were in my friend's father's station wagon and I was facing backward all the way in the back because we were kids. We were like 16, 17. So like, that ride home, I knew my life was going to change. The life that I knew would never be again. I knew that. And that's, that's you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so wait, wait, wait. You need to tell me more about how it did change. I'm really interested in this. I know you went over this in the movie In Wasted Talent too, which right. I saw a couple years ago. Um, but I do want to know more about that. But you they you definitely look like De Niro, by the way. I just have to jump well, in with that. No, I got a different haircut, but. <laughs> yeah, but still to this day, it's like you could, I feel as though you could really have a career of ch being his younger counterpart, like yeah, in I every movie that, almost. Though. I know, but can't, like obviously. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I know. I know. I know. Right? I'm just going to a little seltzer. Yeah. I was watching your new movie, which we'll talk about too. I was watching that the other day and I was thinking to myself, like, you could have played De Niro in The Irishman, really. I should have. Listen, the guy's been an actor for a million years. He's given us some of the best performances and some of the best films ever. Robert De Niro, Robert De Niro is an icon. You know what I mean? He's like, I mean, if you think about his body of work and you start bringing up movies like Cape Fear and Taxi Driver and Deer Hunter, and then a movie like Midnight Run, and it's just like all the things that he's done. You know what um, would have been cool? If you would have saw it, like, if you would have, like I envisioned it, because when he was like Frank, older, 
with the hair and he really had the ring, you, you know, the, the ring. Oh, like in the, yeah, or in the, the um, what do you call it, the nursing home? Yeah, but, but not even not that far okay. back. Even when he was younger, but he still, because he said, there's, there's only three of these, and two of them are, you know, two of the, only three people have this, he said, and two of them are Italian. So you're doing Joe uh, Pesci right now. Huh? Yeah, you're yeah. You're doing Joe Pesci. I do it good. I do it, I know. Uh, I do it well, I mean. And, uh, but I, not even myself, even if that's someone else, just to fill that, just to fill De Niro, young De Niro, and then you bring him in, and then you transition. Maybe like they did in Goodfellas when Henry, when you first see Henry from his feet and they pan up and that's Scorsese style. So he's allowed to do it again because I did it this time. I can do it again. You can't do it. This is my thing. But Scorsese did. And that's his thing. So pan right up. Maybe you maybe even favor the side where you see the ring and then you pan up. You got the shades on and boom, with that grayish slick, the way he had it. There he is, Frank Sheridan, the Irishman. Boom. And that would have been like the crowd would have went crazy in the movie. Shh. But by the time they got to that, because, and not, it wasn't his acting. His acting was fine. It's always fine. It just, it was hard to believe when Robert De Niro went to see Bobby Cannavale. If you remember, uh, uh, yeah. what, what was his name? Uh, Razor Blade. I don't remember, but I know he was the restaurant owner. Right. His name is yeah. Razor Blade. He was okay. a Philly guy. Razor Blade was his name. And when De Niro was telling him, you know, I could get you the best steak for the best price and whatever, and the guy goes, could you? And they were talking about that. That was kind of hard to believe because I'm, or when he goes and tries to get the money from the kid, I don't know. And then, money, and then he has to. The when was that? When he got the money from the kid? I forget. Remember, when that was. remember the one kid that owed him the money and he went to oh, collect yeah, yeah, it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To yeah. collect it. Yes. I know that kid. That kid's name is Danny A. Okay. He was a club promoter, big club promoter in the nineties, uh, in New York in the two thousands. But overall, I liked the movie. I liked I liked the movie very much. All right, so yeah. let's back up a minute to and by the way, what De Niro can convey just with his eyes, like in a scene, by doing nothing and saying nothing, like the amount of motion he can bring is amazing to me. Um, but we all know he's he's major. So you knew your life was gonna change. They chose you right away from the beach, you were a teenager, you were driving home, and then how did it change? Like what happened after that? They called you in, you met De Niro or what? Well, they put me, well, I went that night to uh, the Belmont Playhouse in uh, Fordham in the Bronx. There was a playhouse they had and the kid that found me on the beach, Marco Greco, he, he was worked for the playhouse and he was casting, he was talent scouting for film. So July 5th happened to be a, um, a Sunday. So he said, we're usually not open. He said, but I want to, I want to put you on tape because I really like you. And I think you can really go far. I said, all right. And that's why I knew when I left, I could, I, I read him well and I can see the way he was and the questions that he was asking told me that there was definitely interest. You know what I mean? And that night I went and I remember, um, I bought this little crystal that day at the beach. So I remember I had that on and I had my red and white striped Gap t-shirt. That was my favorite store, by the way, it's back in 1992. I had red shorts from the Gap and I had black sneakers on. And I remember I had my hair slicked. It was like long, so it was like curly-ish. It was tan from the beach. And he gave me, you know, hey, Lilo, how are you? He goes, listen, have you ever done this before? I said, no, I've never done this. He said, okay, he gave me the scene. It was when, remember in the film, I'm shaving? Yeah. Hey, Dad, let me. In the original script, De Niro was shaving. So uh, I approached him and I, the whole scene. And it wasn't Joey ba It wasn't Joey Orso. It was Joey Bama. So I, I do the scene. Hey, Dad, let me ask you a question. You know Joey Bama from down the block? He goes, yeah. What do you, what do you think about him going out with Color Girl and that whole thing? And the guy, you know, he said, here, read the scene. When you're ready, let me know. I went in the other room. I knew what to do. I learned it. We did it. He was like, wow, it was great. And then we did, uh, he wanted to do some additional scenes. He asked me a little bit about myself. Um, and I mentioned that my background is Sicilian. My father's went to a reform school in Sicily called San Calogero. So I know that name, Calogero, like I got uncles. So I'm like, I'm, I'm familiar with this name and where it comes from and what it's about. And I let them know that because obviously that's big, you know? Yeah. And that's, so did you talk to Chaz at that point? Because it's Chaz's story, right? You know that? I mean, no, I did not. Um, <laughs> I 
no, I didn't speak to Chaz or I didn't. That was, he was like the gatekeeper, the guy, Marco Greco. He's the guy that if you get past him, you go to the next. So, you know, I was working at a law office at the time, filing and stuff like that. It was my father was a builder. So he used to use this lawyer. He was his real estate lawyer. So I took a little summer job with him. And, and then I went down to 375 Greenwich Street. I went down with my father, my uncle. It was very intimidating. There was like, literally, it was like 30, 40 kids in the room reading for that part. And, you know, you got kids like professional actors. They got their scripts or in the corner talking to the wall. I've never seen anything like this in a million years. So How'd I you went feel? in. Did what How'd I, you feel then? Were you nervous? Very intimidated. You okay. No, no, I did. I was very intimidated. Now I wouldn't, but not because, not because of the acting part, just because it's just I'm older. It wouldn't be a big deal. Like if I lose, if I don't make it, I don't care. I'm still where I am. I go and then, you know. But uh, I just kept getting callbacks and I was working with acting coaches. And I remember this one lady, she literally had me in the room running back and forth, screaming like a maniac. She said, I want you to go crazy right now. But I'm like, what? And she was like, yeah. So I'm in this room going, ah, ah, I'm running back and forth. And she's like, wow. Cause I know this is this, if I'm ever going to do this kind of stuff, I got to do it now. This Go is what matters more than ever. Uh huh. You know? Okay. So. so when, at what point did you talk to, to Chaz then? Like, how did you, when did he come in? To yes. This? As I was going, you know, it, it, getting callbacks and stuff, obviously De Niro, he doesn't walk around the building where people can see him. I mean, he's De Niro and he's very introverted. Not that he thinks he's better, but he's like a shy guy. He's not like, hey, yeah, yeah. Chaz, was he he would walk around and he'd come wish guys good luck and they and he came you know he came up to me and he said hey how are you and he introduced himself and we spoke you know spoke and he said that you know we really like what you're doing and all this and then eventually one day they said we're gonna go upstairs and meet bob and i didn't know who bob was gonna be because everyone was you know first name basis type thing so we're upstairs to meet bobby and it's back to me we walk in and uh we met the lady uh robin chambers she was his uh assistant she knocked on the door and said, Bob Lilo's here to see you. So when she said that, he turned around and he had that, you know, that De Niro face and he turned around and he came up to me and it's like, wow. And we kind of met like in the middle of the room and I was very nervous and I uh, met him, Chaz was there. And, uh, you know, basically told me the same thing that Chaz told me. He said that we really like what you're doing. Don't change anything and just keep doing it. If there's anything that we want you to do different, we'll let you know, but right now you're where you're supposed to be. So I kept coming in and as I kept coming in, now it's only me. So now there's no one else coming. So I, that's common sense that I'm doing a pretty good job if it's only me. If one. So now he, when I go there, now they try me with different combinations of kids to play my friends where the best chemistry is. Also, they also had to audition the girl. So I would do that scene and kiss Literally, I'm not even kidding. Here I am, 15 years old at this time. You got, you know, girls 22, 23, real, nice, real pretty ones too. But I'm like 15, I'm so nervous. And they're coming in one after the other. You know, and, and for some of them, it was just so nerve wracking. I looked yeah. at some of these girls and I said, damn, I feel so bad for you right now. I wish I could help you. They're like, oh, <laughs> shaking. Yeah. But then when that girl Terrell Hicks came in, she was on, she was great. She wasn't nervous. And just the way she said, Kahoo, the way she went to, I said, Kalojo. She said, Kahoo. De Niro liked that. I heard him go, <laughs> he gave like a little, when she left, when she left, he, what they love her, you think about it. He really liked her. Okay, so after the movie then, after it was all said and done, it changed everything you said. It was like a pivotal moment for you. So what changed after that? I mean, just you're getting attention from people that would never give it to you before. You're like getting you know, like, yeah, it's, you know, like, I mean, I had an answering machine back then. I'd come home and have like, you know, 47 miss, you know, the messages, you know, stuff like that. It just, boom, you know, it was very overwhelming. Good thing cell phones weren't around back then because it would have been just too much for someone, especially a kid at 16. Because it's like, I don't even, like, the problem was I didn't really care about. The acting was cool, but I didn't really care about it. I care more about being a 16 year old kid and being with my friends and doing the things I'm supposed to do. Go to prom and 
stuff like that and actually get my education. The acting thing, it kind of fell on my lap. But then I was like, you know what? I mean, who really gets this kind of opportunity? And De Niro's like, you know, my idol. So it was like, but I still wanted to be a kid, you know? And that's, that was the problem. So, what, so how did it older. turn into a problem? Like what became the problem? Is that when drugs and stuff started becoming an issue? If you like this video, please make sure you smash that like button and tap on subscribe for more Real Talks with your favorite celebrities. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Make sure you tell all your friends to check out Really Famous with Carol Mayer Robinson. They're the worst videos ever. You gotta check them out. Thanks for watching. See you soon.